Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Wrath of the Righteous with me, Bragatalan. Let's enter the notorious Blackwater. So this dungeon has built up quite a reputation because of its difficulty curve. I think you can gain access to this dungeon at around level 10. I'd recommend not doing it at level 10. Also, before you enter, make sure you have someone uh, don't mind me. that's some sort of electricity damage. I mean, Jolt would be ideal because it has unlimited castings. Uh, lacking that, make sure you have some high strength companions with you that can use Coup de Gras. I should have probably buffed it up first. Your defeat is certain. You'll be overpowered. Lay down your weapons and your lives will be spared. Uh, get bent, and your lives will be spared. Resistance is futile. You cannot prevail. Pitchily. Surrender. Voluntary modernization is less painful than the alternative. They will break against our resolve. And you guys are in for a world of hurt. Cover me, alright? The Inheritor, guide Be gone, my way. Don't hold back! You've crossed the wrong mongrel. Uh. Actually, real quick, uh, buddy. Why don't we cast... this. Yeah, I did forget about this first fight. So, ideally, you... Buff up before you enter this area. Is that you or that you? Why not both? You will survive me. And there you have it. Let's grab the health potions here. I'll leave the rest of the stuff for after we leave. I'm always ready. Oh, you can only attack these guys. Oh, there it is. Distract them from me. Get another it's worth not experience a pop, so. Into the brain. Definitely gonna do it. My skills are you could argue that's not very lawful good of us, but we don't know if they're gonna attack us from behind. So, better safe than sorry. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't get electricity damage with Divine Weapon Bond. The speed might be worth it. I don't have enough for Holy and Speed yet. That's still probably better than what, uh, and holy. A bright future. Unless I cast haste, in which case that doesn't stack. My tail 
gets restless. You really don't need anything but here besides electricity resistance. Let's cast that again on. I cast that, yeah, I cast on the Oprah, but I didn't need to. No reason to pause. Did I ever give her another amulet? No, she still has that equipped. Uh, we'll change that eventually. Always be ready for the worst. I will lend you my aid. A couple of castings of this out. We do it my way. So you're trapped in this dungeon until you complete it, unless you pass this use magic device. 35 DC. I don't think anybody in my party has anything close to that. I think Nenio is who I usually have that has it. Has my, who I usually have in my party that has it. There we go. I can talk. Just don't blame me. Yeah. You've never seen such an unusual mechanism. That's unlike anything you've ever dealt with before. So we've got the door controls. The gates before you look sturdy and well built. The metal doors are completely smooth and devoid of any keyholes or other locking mechanisms. Next to one of the doors is a small panel covered in symbols. Examine the gates. You quickly discover the joints and mechanical contraptions that serve to set the gates in motion. The doors themselves also reveal something interesting. What at first glance appeared to be a sheet of solid armor, upon closer inspection, looks more like cloth. The armor is made from extremely fine gray fibers that have been very tightly and skillfully fitted together to create a single fabric. Which sounds kind of like Kevlar. And a neat tidbit about Kevlar, which you use to typically block bullets, um, is it can only take one hit before it's compromised, because it, when it hits, it destroys the integrity of the, the woven thread. Uh, okay, investigate the unknown metal. Judging by the materials and yielding hardness, this is the sky metal known as adamantine. However, I've also heard it pronounced adamantine. I've already said adamantine, but I guess either works. However, the darker matte color suggests that it is more likely an alloy of adamantine, and a type of steel called glaucite, or glaucite. A much cheaper substance, but also not quite as tough. You notice interspersions of yet another material among the gray fibers. Flecks of pale green that appear more crystalline than metallic in structure. This is probably no cool. Another sky metal. An extraordinary crystal that can be forged like iron, and that has the capacity to resist magic. The creator of these gates must have wanted them to be truly, a truly indestructible barrier. Uh, pry open the panel. Use a knife to pry off the panel and discover a multitude of metal strings beneath. Wires. You sense there is an elegant purpose to the seemingly chaotic tangle, as if some mechanical spiders have spun a delicate web. You touch one of the strings to the tip of your blade, and watches eight green lights spark to life in the dark, like the beady, hungry eyes of an arachnid. In the flickering light, you spot a small object deep inside, completely blackened and melted. A closer inspection, you realize that it's a finger bone that has been severed and burned to a crisp. It probably belonged to the last person who tried to open these gates before you. The crick crack of tiny metal legs prompts you to pull your hands away from the panel. 
Right, uh, break down the gates by force. None of your strikes leave so much as a dent on the doors. The metal is simply too strong and unyielding. Yeah, right. I right, touch the gate panel. The symbols on the panel react to your touch, lighting up with a brief metallic sound. Every symbol you touch stays illuminated for a little while. When you press three in a row, they fade with a sharp, unpleasant sound that makes your ears hurt. Six symbols adorn the panel buttons. A circle, a triangle, a square, a circle with a dot, a rhombus, and a dot. Examine the buttons closely. On one of the symbols, the rhombus, you notice a bloody fingerprint. The smudge, though almost entirely fa faded entirely, instantly gives a sinister cast to the panel. Alright, I give up on trying to guess the code for now. After several moments without any additional input, the symbols on the panel fade. Leave. We can find clues to that on either side here. We'll go left first. We won't we fall here. here. This. I swear it. Make every strike count. Not today, buddy. Who you think you are? Alright, special tools needed to open such a strong lock. Follow if you dare. The reinforced door is tightly locked by an internal mechanism. Is that the pass key to unlock the gateway? So we have three locked doors, all locked by different means. Fantastic. I'm off. There's something here. So it gives you uh, two wands of called lightning thus far, because not everybody has lightning damage when they show up. Do not fear. Do not waver. There's a spellcaster up here. Hang in there, guys. They got the next one. The wrong mongrel. Damn, it's way too long to cut through these guys. You won't survive me. Alright, let's do some coup de gras action here. It's a pretty cool animation to it. Oh, that's lame. Coup de Gras doesn't uh, proc special carnage. Strike! The world has suffered enough. I I couldn't remember if it did or not. I do what I must. But now we know. All right, so we got a flaming lock pick. It is unlikely that this device was designed to open locked doors, but it is perfectly suited to that purpose. Giant gas in the connected fl metal flask with a low whine. The flaming lockpick releases a steam stream, sorry, of white hot flame, heating and quickly vaporizing the metal lock. And a flaming lockpick fuel. Metal flask is full of foul smelling gas. Fuel for a flaming lockpick. It's surprising. These vast machines perform tasks with the same delicacy as a silversmith, refurbishing and repairing damaged components for the machine people. I'm gone. It appears that the humming machine filling the air around it with electricity is powering the surrounding mechanisms. Alright, nothing we need yet. Pretty good, aren't I? The notes read Percentage of successful implantations increased to 47. For the purposes of improving this result further, 
Uh, complete removal of the temporal lobes. Yeah, complete removal of the temporal lobes will be implemented in future procedures. Right, access to maintenance cells granted. Going on, fellas. You showed up to battle, my friends. Sorry, you guys are worth Time experience. To share your treasures. This will <laughs> cover me, all right? Can we retreat already? I will bring down the divine Good job, Bismuth. All right, this is actual loot. Time War Note. The work on fortifying the outer perimeter is almost complete. We are now well protected against surprise raids, and no wandering demon will ever disturb us again. Unfortunately, Master Hundred Face, <laughs> this is a ridiculous name, had tasked me with routine checks to keep the mechanisms in working condition, and I hate leaving the device maintenance area. These darn gates are driving me insane. I can never remember the right access code. Why can't they just stick to numbers? They just had to use this geometric Numeria nonsense. I keep forgetting the sequence does not end with a cycle, it ends with a base. The symbols are basically the same, the cycle is a circle, the base is a circle with a dot. But I keep mixing them up, and I just end up standing in front of the gates like an idiot. So we know the circle with the dot is the last part of the code. So I'll just write it on this, and keep reading it over and over, every day, until I get it. The third symbol in the code is a base, a circle with a dot, not a cycle. So there's only three, three symbols to the code. The last one is a circle with a dot. I do like the name of the quest though. Last gift of a brilliant mind. So we can access one of these. I think it's this one. Now you do need one fuel for each time you use the uh, flaming lockpick. Uh, we just got more flaming lockpick fuel. I am never wrong. It doesn't always work out that way, just so happens to this time. We got Scream of Pain. Whenever they wilder this plus three thundering burst Tongi lands a hit, which is convenient. Uh, the enemy must pass a fortitude saving throw DC 23 or become shaken for 1d3 rounds. There aren't a lot of Tongis in the game, but I tend to remember where they're at. I've never used Tongis on any of my characters either. We do it my way. They will break against our resolve. You see, I'll just kind of. They're in pretty standout locations. You can handle them. Right. Thank you. Right, grunt, a spellcaster. Let's take care of that guy. Relic to purge corruption. We need to start resting. The remains of the unknown warrior exude a holy aura. His death at the hands of the demons was a martyr's death. Looks like this corpse has been lying here on this bed, slowly becoming mummified for several months at least. The sight of the thick straps that were used to bind helpless and wounded people to the beds is sickening. The dead crusader on the bed was seriously wounded. 
bleeding where they lay, as evidenced by the darkened, pungent smelling sheet. I'm off. The dead person's wounds were carefully bandaged, but their injuries were too extensive and led to their death. I do what I must. Damn. It's just not my lucky day. I rolled a one. Unfortunate. The sinister looking instruments on the table could only be used to inflict horrifying torture. Ask nicely. We should throw out a couple extra buffs here. Something wrong. This might can be a little annoying. Great team. Aha! A test of my ability. The light take you. A Numerian Bomb. A hefty contraption that can be easily identified as Numerian by its appearance. The case features a large red button and a series of warning symbols such as crosses, skulls, and fire. The signifiers indicate a universally obvious meaning to all observers, regardless of their language, that this item is a powerful bomb. A bloodstained armor belonging to crusaders and demons lies in a pile, waiting to be melted down. So the universally interpreted symbols, like what was described on that bomb, is actually a, a real-life thing. All the symbols around, like, radioactive waste and other hazardous materials, they're designed in a way that it should be understood by everybody. Right, same description as the other one. The thick walls of the blast furnace retain the heat from the fire that recently raged within it. I'm gone. I thought that. It's a note on this side as well. We do it my way. Well, we've got two out of the three symbols. I swear there was another Follow note that gave a hint. You meditate on your mistakes. I might make you feel better. Oh, we can also use this. So we know that the circle with the dot is last. It does not start with the circle. It may start with the circle. Then rhombus. So maybe it's... That. That, that. The symbols on the panel flash red for a moment. Then their glow quickly fades away. Oh, let's look at this note again. I may have misremembered. So it does end with that. We know the rhombus is part of it. So maybe it could be... Um... Nope. So when I press it, uh, the panel produces a quiet metallic click. We could sit here and guess for a bit. But I thought there was a second note that told you... Give you another clue. All right, forgot about this. Now, one of the enemies you defeated is still alive. Despite the gravity of his wounds, he keeps trying to stand up, but to no avail. You now have a chance to inspect him more closely. His body is covered in clan tattoos, 
and it looks as if the top of his head was struck clean off by a mighty blow. A strange barbed object resembling a crown or circlet adorns the warrior's forehead. Long thin spikes project from the circlet into the gaping wound, piercing straight to his exposed brain. A son of Sarkoris, or used to be one at least. Who did this to you, warrior? Your body's moving, but it's clear you're long dead. Examine the wounded warrior. Plus examination reveals a truly gruesome sight. It's clear the warrior's head was, has been mutilated deliberately, and with surgical precision. The top of his skull has been sawed off, and numerous thin metal spikes have been sunk deep into his exposed brain. Every now and then, one of the circlet spikes begins to glow slightly, and a flash of lightning runs along its length, causing the body to make another convulsive attempt at standing up. Judging by the appearance of the other guards in this place, they all have been subjected to the same monstrous procedure. Warrior, can you hear me? The wounded Sarkorian ignores your words, single-mindedly focused on his attempts to stand up. He seems not to notice you at all. Help the wounded warrior. As soon as you lay your hand on the warrior, a monstrous, abnormally high-pitched howl bursts from his mouth. It's unclear how his vocal cords can even produce this horrible sound. The soldier's body revolts with a spasm, and the circlet on his head begins to glow. Touch the strange contraption on the Sarkorian's head. As you touch the sinister-looking circlet on the wounded warrior's head, one of the metal spikes embedded in his brain breaks off with a twang. It seems it was damaged in battle, the movement destroyed it completely. The Sarkorian instantly freezes. His lips grow pale, whispering, Master, I can't hear you anymore. Command me, Master. Who are you? The wounded warrior turns his face toward you, but his eyes seem to be looking through you. Master, I hear you once more. Command me. I'm the first line of defense. I'm the keeper of the mission. I'm a function materialized, a command executed. What is your name? A name is a lie. A name is unnecessary. A function is all that is needed. A command is needed. Who gave the order to attack me? You did, Master. You issued the command. You assigned the function. I have not executed it, but I will. You know, I don't know if I actually talked to this guy before. Maybe my first playthrough, but not my second or third or fourth. <laughs> I need the code for the gates. The knowledge of how to proceed deeper into the camp is a matter of security. My function is specifically not to know the code, so that I am unable to divulge it. I have forgotten this knowledge, as you instructed, Master. Try to figure out how the circlet on the warrior's head operates. After inspecting the circlet, you feel like you understand the basics of how it works. Even though this is your first time seeing this machine, principles of magic are universal, and you can intuitively predict the consequences of your tinkering. With a knife in hand, you carefully pull out another wicked spike, causing the wounded warrior to flinch and raise his empty gaze toward you. The wounded soldier, with uncertainty in his voice, declares, The prohibition is lifted. The function of defense is no longer essential. I am ready to reply, Master. The access code is Pyramid RRR. The gruesome circle in the soldier's head begins to heat up rapidly. The melted metal seeps deep into the mutilated soldier's burnt flesh, and he faces his death with complete indifference. I don't remember that at all. I always had to figure out the code myself, but now we know what it is. Which we didn't need the second hint anyway, because we had the one button that had the blood stain on it. So we need the triangle, we need the rhombus, and we need the circle with the dot. All the symbols light up with a green glow. You hear a mechanical clanking noise. So, I don't remember. I don't like to use this here regardless. I think there's just enough of these to open all the doors that you need to use them on. So if you use it here, you'll be short one numerian bomb from one of the doors. But I could be misremembering and that there's enough Numerian bombs for this door and the rest of them. Don't quote me on that. But either way, for now, I'm going to call it here, and next time, we'll continue further into Blackwater. It's a pretty massive dungeon. I don't think it's too bad. There is one very difficult fight here, if you're not properly buffed up for it. 
But outside of that, it's not too difficult. But either way for now, thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next one.